Hello and welcome to this new section in the Disrepair channel. Inspired by Mr. Mobile's One Phone for Fun, this series is going to a personal throwback to those phones of the late 2000s, early 2010s that I was too young to be able to love. Some of these phones I've actually had, but again I was too young to actually use the phone. The first episode is about the Nokia Asha 311. This one was mine since, I don't know, it went to my uncle in the early 2010s and when I would stay at their house during the summer, I'd play with it. One day when I was about to pack to go home, he just gave it to me. My family always used to give me their old crummy phones, so they basically spawned this obsession. At any rate, I'm not had an Asha 311. The Asha lineup was interesting. It existed to be a stepping stool between the low-end feature phones and the high-end Windows phone that Nokia is producing, the Lumia. I do have some, which will get their own episode eventually. There was kind of three generations of the Asha. The first wave was the ones with the keypad. It came in two flavors, a standard QWERTY and D-pad layout, or what they called touch and type, which replaced the D-pad with a resistive touchscreen. Those could come with either T9 keyboard or QWERTY keyboard. Then they made the so-called full touch ones. They basically looked like smartphones, but technically weren't yet. I'll get into it in a moment. The Asha 311 is from that generation. Then the second gen full touch Ashas came with a design closer to what would become the Nokia X. These Ashas came with Nokia Asher platform. What is that? Well, here's where it gets a bit more interesting. Nokia had a couple of operating systems in use by then. They had Series 30, Series 40, Symbian, also known as Series 60, and later on they used Windows Phone. Series 30 was for the low end feature phones with no app support. Series 40 was for the mid-range phones, and Simeon was used for actual smartphones. Yes, iOS and Android weren't the first smartphone OSs. Even though these different platforms would have similar user interfaces, their underlying technology was different to accommodate the different processing power and market positioning of Nokia's very phones. Don't look at these platforms like full-fledged experiences, as a final product can vary a lot. It's like Linux or NT, it's just the OS. The user interface can be completely different. Most Ashas use Series 40 5th edition, with a special Asha interface that resembled a much more smartphone look. And remember that by that time, it was around 2011. Android and iOS existed. But the thing is that Series 40 wasn't an actual smartphone OS. It didn't have full-fledged HTML browsers or even multitasking. It could only have one app open at once. In fact, if you look closer, you can see that under the decoration, Series 40 Ashas act a lot like Nokia's other Series 40 phones. They ask for confirmation when creating an app, every time you do an action it has a pop-up, and it even runs the same software, which are Java apps. Also, all of the wording in the pop-ups are very similar. The true smartphone OS was Symbian. It had a WebKit browser, true multitasking, Symbian apps could run the cute framework, and apparently you could even take video calls. Hey, how are you? Also, the interface was much more touch first, so technically Asha was not even a true smartphone. The second generation full touch phones ran Nokia Asha platform, which was a short lived OS. It was kind of a weird almost smartphone OS, just a bit more than S40. It looked like Migo had a thing called Fastlane, which is part notification center and part Pebble timeline. It didn't have multitasking, it ran Java apps, had a web browser with the Gecko engine, so. It was an actual phone browser, and it lived for about a year until Microsoft decided to switch Nokia's low-end touch phones to Windows Phone. That was also including the Nokia X, which was meant to be a replacement for the Asha, which ran a customized version of Android called the Nokia X software platform. That was even more of a stepping stool to Windows Phone, because not only it actually ran a smartphone OS, although with no Play Store but a Nokia Store, the home screen looked like a Windows Phone. The phones that followed the Asha, as I said, run Windows Phone, and they did well. One of those phones was the Lumia 520, which I do actually have and did use, so it warrants a future episode. But the 520 was actually the most sold Windows thing ever. At over 12 million sales, it sold more than any other Windows phone, Windows tablet, and apparently any other Windows PC, desktop or laptop. So the little joke actually worked. Alright, so let's stop talking about the history of the Asha, and let's talk about my Asha. Actually, has a bunch of features, although they're all available on other S40 phones. And if you didn't care about apps like WhatsApp, Twitter, or web browser, you could actually use this phone today. It has 3G, music playing, calendar, reminders, mail, 
a logo like using it with modern mail services. It takes photos and videos, and you can even use a map, although no Asha had GPS location, meaning that you don't get turn-by-turn -turn navigation. It has a lot of preloaded media, probably to showcase the 311's media playing capabilities with some very bad dubstep music. He has an app called Introduction with music that looks like it comes from Pokemon X presentation videos with a looping video that showcases all 311's features. Which is probably what you would see in the store actually. And finally, the games. This thing has Angry Birds. I didn't know there was a Java version of Angry Birds, but it's here. It only has one world pack, but hey, it's free. There's some demos of some games and an internet game that I never figured out called Get Ahead. And then the Machia Made games. First of all, Climate Mission. It's a game with missions across the world map that teaches the different ways of reducing climate change with little mini games. It's actually quite fun. And there is Maze. Where you control a ball tilting your phone and you have to get it to the end. There is Dice, which is basically 20 in 1 but with dice. and some other games I never played. And that's basically all there is to it. The internet browser used to work, I watched some YouTube videos with it in the past, although it doesn't work anymore. Probably something to do with certificates having expired around 2020. The overall feel of this phone is actually quite good. It has Gorilla Glass, which even for other Ashas, it was weird. It was one of the few Ashas up until then to have a capacitive touchscreen, instead of the crappy resistive in other Ashas. While the responsive lay is slightly off, that's probably due to the S40 software being too old. And it's still better than what other Ashes had, which is the trash resistant touchscreen. Those are like the one in the S, where it works by pressure in a plastic. Works better with a stylus or a fingernail and only supports one touch point, so there's no pinch to zoom. This small phone fits really well in my hands, but only my hands are small. I don't get how adult people like my uncle use this to browse the built-in Twitter client because his fingers were way larger than mine. I guess this is an era where people actually tap with their phone on the side because damn the QWERTY keyboard is cramped in portrait. I think this phone comes set to use T9 typing while in portrait and it actually works quite well. Yes guys, I do actually know how to type in T9. The rest of the construction of the phone is plastic but not the same cheap plastic as other phones. This one feels good. And in the hand, this phone feels dense and quality. Even though the plastic has cracked over the years, it all feels adhered and good. Maybe the worst thing is that the removable back cover removes too easily. But hey, at least have the benefit of the phone disassembling itself when it falls to the floor instead of breaking, like modern phones. Because as you can see, the glass is not cracked. That's what people mean when they say they don't make them like they used to. Because damn, this thing survived some hard abuse by young me. Although luckily I found that the touch stops working until some... <gasps> percussive maintenance is done. As a kid, I love this phone. Since I wasn't allowed to take the iPhone 4 I used as an iPod Touch out of the house, having an actual touchscreen phone was super cool. I didn't have a phone number and nobody to call anyway, so it was also used as a pseudo iPod Touch. I remember recording my then favorite song, Magic's Root, from the car stereo, and I would do little vlogs on this crappy camera that it has. Extreme Gaming was also done with some climate mission and dice. And from what I can tell, this may have been a really good phone. If it weren't by the fact that it was a really small screen phone, and a platform that was already nearing its end. And this was probably the contrary to what people wanted in 2012. Now, when you look at the 80 euro price brand new this thing had, and the fact that it has social media, WhatsApp, and a browser, it started to make a bit more sense if they didn't want to pony up like 40 bucks for a half decent Android phone. But the truth is that people seem to say that the phone was not that good back then. And let's be honest, even though it had most of what you needed, it didn't do it well, it was still Series 40 with a touchscreen, which it seems to be the biggest complaint that this thing had when it was still current. While it's a cute little phone, it will only be good for the people who are actually willing to pull up with it. 
well, it's probably going to be people who are looking for a minimalist phone and those people are never going to think about this phone as an option anyways the verdict is that this phone with this software was raised at a time where nobody gave a damn about these phones and maybe it was a bad idea marketing it as a smartphone when it really in reality it wasn't it just happened to have a touchscreen Thank you for watching this video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.